Y'all know I wrote a book, right? It's called Buy a Game and it's free. Click the link down there, you got it. What's going on, everybody? Dre Baldwin with DreAllDay.com. We are back with our 2017 NBA team by team season previews. Now we are talking the Atlanta Hawks. The Hawks came in fourth seed in the Eastern Conference last year, defeated the Boston Celtics in the first round, went on to the second round, and who they played? They played the Cavs in the second round, lost to the Cavs in the second round, and then went on and made some moves this offseason. Made some moves this offseason that are some very interesting moves, some new faces in new places, and let's talk about what they got going on. Looking at this team, just looking at We'll just go top to bottom. So there's a couple of new people we'll talk about and a couple of old people. Kent Bazemore, they signed Kent Bazemore to a big deal, $15 million a year he's going to be making. And as a, a 3 and D guy, Kent Bazemore is a guy who can hit that outside three-pointer. He is a solid defensive player. I wouldn't say he's an excellent defensive player, but a solid defensive player. And he fits perfectly on his roster. He found a perfect fit for him in the NBA. So that is a player such as Kent Bazemore, 6'5 guy, wing player, 27 years old, who can hit the threes and play some defense is worth $15 million a season. So he fits. He fits perfectly with what the Hawks, at least what they were doing last year. And obviously they think he's going to fit with what they're doing this year since they signed him to the deal. Tim Hardaway Jr., he's still only 24 years old, been in the league several years now at that shooting guard position. Didn't get too much opportunity with the Hawks last season, but maybe, maybe he'll get some more playing time this upcoming year, but I really, I'm not really sure that he will. He averaged six points last year, one assist, one and a half rebounds, and only 17 minutes a game. So, I mean, he was getting in the game. It's not like he was sitting on the bench, but I'm not sure how much opportunity there will be for Tim Hardaway Jr. simply because a guy like Kent Bazemore is playing his exact same position. They pretty much do the same things. Bazemore just does them a little bit better and they are pretty much the same size. So I don't know how much opportunity Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to get this year. Kirk Heinrich, solid veteran guard. Kirk Heinrich, 35 years old, solid guard, been around the league, has been a, seems to be a respected veteran on the teams that he's played with. He's a good veteran guy to have on your team as a backup guard. Someone who can step up and play if they need him in the pinch. Dwight Howard is the big new addition to the Atlanta Hawks. Hawks signed him to a deal. He's going to pay him $23 million a year. I mean, we know who Dwight Howard is. I'm not quite sure exactly what you're going to get out of Dwight Howard on a season-by-season -season and game-by-game -game basis, but I think he's going to have more fun and more opportunity to do what Dwight Howard can do on this Hawks team than he did the last couple of years playing in Houston. We'll come back. We'll circle back around to Dwight Howard. Chris Humphreys is on this roster. Solid, solid backup four, man. I think he can be your eighth, ninth guy on a winning, successful team. Jarrett Jack, another point guard who is a veteran presence, has been around, respected guy, good guy to have on this team. And he's a guy who I think has some chemistry with someone like a Dwight Howard, someone like, not anybody else I'm going to say on this roster, but somebody like a Dwight Howard and Jarrett Jack played in the Atlanta area. He went to Georgia Tech. So I don't know if he's from Atlanta, but he's played college in that area. So I'm sure he'll be happy to be in that, that town. Kyle Corver. We know what Kyle Corver can do, one of the best outside shooters out there, can take a dribble or two and knock down his open jump shot. Not a bad defender, actually, doesn't get enough credit for his defense, and we know he can knock down those shots. And when you got a guy in the paint eating up space like Dwight Howard, even off the alley-oops, if I don't know Dwight has his post game back, we'll talk about that in a minute. Kyle Corver is a good guy to pair with a big, guy, a big man like a Dwight Howard and also good point guards who can get the ball to him, somebody like a Jared Jack and someone like a Kirk Heinrich. But let's see who else is on his roster. Paul Millsap was an all-star a couple years back. Really solid player, better player than, actually he's, I think people have rated him properly as a very good player. I wouldn't even call Paul Millsap underrated because he's been an all-star. You can't be underrated, you're an all-star, unless you're even higher level than an all-star. I think he's properly rated Paul Millsap. And it was looking like either him or Al Horford was going to go. I thought maybe it might be Millsap, but then Al Horford walked. So Millsap is going to be the big man on his team. Great thing about Paul Millsap pairing him with a Dwight Howard is that since Dwight is pretty much limited to within eight feet of the basket, he's not shooting any outside shots. Damn sure isn't going to make any. Paul Millsap can step out to that three-point line. He can hit the three-point shot. He can take guys off the dribble. He got a little bit of, little bit of handle, Paul Millsap. Yeah, he's not your normal quote-unquote power forward he's a six foot eight and he has some some movement there he can move around a little bit a little bit of agility Mike Muscala big man I'm not sure how much opportunity he'll get this year to do his thing but it is now the Dennis Schroeder era in Atlanta 
it is the Dennis Schroeder era. Even though Jared Jack's on the team, even though Kirk Heinrich's on the team, Dennis Schroeder needs to be the starting point guard. He needs to be the guy with the ball in his hands. He's 23 years old. This is his opportunity to show he's the guy. Jeff Teague is gone, who he was the backup to. Now that Jeff Teague's gone, it just makes sense that he steps in. Neither Kirk Heinrich nor Jared Jack should be the starting point guard on his team if, they're, if they plan on contending and going somewhere. Those guys are great backups, but he should definitely be the starter, which I expect to happen. Mike Scott, guy who... I think, was it last year on this team, he got a chance to prove a few things. I think he'll get more opportunity this year. Just looking at Atlanta's front court, it looks overall pretty thin. There's a lot of opportunity, a lot of minutes up for grabs in the Hawks front court. And I think Mike Scott has a chance to grab some of those minutes. Thabo Cephalosha, Thabo, Thabo Cephalosha, 6'7 wing guy, 32 years old. Similar to Kent Bazemore in my opinion. But it's good to have two of them, I guess, if that's the type of team you want to put together. You could even throw a Kyle Korver in that mix, even though Korver's a much better shooter than those other guys and maybe not as athletic, but pretty much in the same vein. Tiago Splitter's on this team now. He'll be a solid backup big man. I like him as a solid backup big man. Looking at this Hawks roster overall, this is some interesting things here. You got Paul Millsap, who's an all-star. You got Dwight Howard, who has been an all-star, still one of the best centers in the game when he's healthy and engaged when he's healthy and engaged he is one of the best centers in the game looking at the rest of the team Dennis Schroeder I think will I think he's ready to step in and do his thing he's been a backup for a couple years he's been playing so it's not like he's been sitting on the bench you know collecting dust he's actually been getting on the court playing so I think he's going to be ready to step in you got your wings who have been on this team in Baysmore and also Thabo Cephalosha. So those are the wings. Then you got cover the bigs. You got some veteran backups at the guard spot. You got some veteran backups at the big man spot. On the wing positions, I don't know who your veteran backups are, if there are any veteran backups. Looking at the roster, it doesn't seem like, I mean, you could say the starters are veterans. So really, maybe you don't need that much depth. You can have some youth in there too. It doesn't hurt. You got a Tim Hardaway Jr., I guess. You could say he's a person you have as a... I wouldn't even call him a veteran because he hasn't had he hasn't played heavy minutes on the team yet for me to on a team that was successful for me to say he's like a good a veteran backup he is a backup and I would say he's actually more youthful than veteran because he still hasn't gotten a chance to play solidly starter as an for an entire season yet on a successful team so I wouldn't even say that but let's go look at the big signing for the offseason the guy who how he goes is going to determine how this team goes this season that is Mr. Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard is from Atlanta, Georgia. He's 30 years old. He's going to turn 31 during this season. He's been in the NBA for 12 years already. It seems like, doesn't seem like it's been that long. But 12 years he's been in the NBA since coming out of high school. He's a, he's a guy who was completely dependable as far as physically. Physically showing up and playing every game. Dwight Howard played all 82 games for the Orlando Magic his first four years in the league. His first four years in the league, he played 82 games all four times his fifth year he played 79 games so he missed three games his next year 82 again the next year he played 78 it wasn't until his seventh year in the league one two three four five six one two three four five six seven eighth year in the league it wasn't until dwight's eighth year in the league that he missed some time and this was during a knockout shortened season he missed 12 of the 66 games he played 54 games still played a lot of minutes then and it was his highest minutes per game that year 38 minutes a game Dwight Howard was playing then he went to LA still played 76 games he was dealing with the back injury he was not 100% healthy from the back injury but his shooting percentages were still pretty good it just seemed his effort was not there it just seemed like his effort wasn't there even though during that year Dwight was playing for the Lakers many people if you just look at his stats a guy averaged 17 points 12 and a half rebounds two and a half blocks and a steal per game the guy was still an all-star he was still putting up all-star numbers those are for a starting center those are superstar numbers 17 12 two and a half blocks and a steal a game shooting 58 percent from the floor going to the line 10 times a game those are all-star numbers those are superstar big man max contract numbers he put up the one year he was in la it just seemed he was uninspired which just tells you kind of ability that dwight howard has for him to put up 17 12 two and a half and be seen as an underachieving player. Went to Houston, played 71 games. His minutes went down a little bit his first year in Houston, but his scoring went up. He actually scored more points in two fewer minutes per game playing with Houston because he got the ball a couple more times a game. Still get you 12 rebounds. His blocks went down a little bit, but his points went up. 
His second year in Houston, he only played 41 games. This is the year that he had a few injuries. His scoring went down to 15.8 points a game. And then last year was his worst year in Houston when he only played 32 minutes a game, which is the lowest minutes. He actually played his second lowest minutes per game ever. His two lowest minutes per game seasons ever in his career. Dwight Howard, 12 years or the last two years playing for the Houston Rockets. Now, you tell me why that is. I think it's because Houston, just because of Houston's style, Houston made the decision that James Harden is the guy they're going to build around. And if there's a class between Dwight Howard and James Harden, then Dwight Howard loses. And I think we saw that in the fact that Dwight Howard's not on the team anymore. Last year, 71 games played. He only shot the ball eight and a half times a game. He's never shot the ball that little except his rookie year in the league. Eight and a half shots per game. Even though his shooting percentage is way up, he shot 62% from the floor. He made 5.2 out of 8.5 shots. He was making shots incredibly at a high, at an incredibly high rate, but he was only shooting the ball eight and a half times a game. His free throw attempts went down. His free throw attempts have gone down every single year since 2011. Went from damn near 12 to 10 and a half to nine and a half to nine to six and a half. That's pretty much where he is right now. Six and a half free throws a game. His free throw shooting has actually gotten worse the worst has been of his whole career it was last year which shows that his attention his focus is off rebounding he's still getting you 12 rebounds a game he's still blocking one and a half shots per game and he still gave you 13 points last year so a guy who's gonna if i told you your center is going to average 14 points 12 rebounds and one and a half blocks i think you'd be pretty damn happy with that when you got a guy like james harden hogging the ball the entire play every time on offense I think you'd be pretty happy with that with Dwight Howard. But knowing Dwight Howard's ability, knowing what he can do, knowing who he is, he could have done a lot more if there was some chemistry between those two superstars. So I'm not blaming James Harden. I'm not blaming Dwight. I'm not even blaming Houston. It's just the fact that there was no chemistry between those two guys. I don't think on the court or off the court. And that's why it didn't work, which is why Dwight Howard left the Houston Rockets. Now he's playing for the Atlanta Hawks back in his hometown. I don't know how much that is actually going to matter to his performance on the court, but the Hawks are going to need him to perform. With a point guard like Schroeder, who is quick, he can get into the lane. You got outside shooters like Bazemore, Thabo Cephalosha. You got Kyle Korver. You got a power forward in Paul Millsap who can stretch the floor. He can play all around the floor. He can go out to the three-point line and handle that ball. Dwight Howard is going to have room to operate down there in the paint. He's in his hometown, so maybe there'll be more attention for him. Maybe that means he should be happier. I mean, he did choose the team, so I think he's going to perform at a really high level this upcoming season. So looking at the Houston Rockets overall, this season's performance, what do I think this team's going to do? Since they won 44 games last year and did make the playoffs, no, not the Houston Rockets, the Atlanta Hawks, excuse me, they won 48 games and did make the playoffs. Coming in, they were in that, that jam between that mix there with the Heat, with the Bobcats, with the I believe it was the Pacers that was the other team in that mix last season. I think this team this year with Dwight Howard and engaged Dwight Howard, we definitely have to see the growing of Dennis Schroeder at that point guard position. We know what you're going to get from Millsap. You know what you're going to get from that, those wing guys. You know what you're going to get from the wings and your forwards, such as Millsap, Cephalosha, Kent Bazemore, Kyle Korver. You have steadiness, the same people there in those positions who are solid players but they are i mean first second round a first second round team with those guys as your guys so the difference makers are going to be how does this new point guard Schroeder do now how does this big man dwight howard do he's replacing al horford shooters replacing jeff t and not to say that al horford and jeff t are bad players but listen the atlanta hawks were a second round team with those guys maybe they make it to the conference finals if things break properly which they did a couple years ago but overall this team wasn't going anywhere this team wasn't going anywhere with that roster, so they had to make some changes. So I'd rather the team make some changes and see what happens than just keep being good but not great, which is what the Hawks have been for several years. So they finally made those changes. And again, Dwight Howard, overall, if I had to pick between Dwight Howard and Al Horford, if I haven't engaged Dwight Howard, I'm picking Dwight Howard. Skill-wise, I'm picking Dwight Howard. As far as leadership-wise, as far as galvanizing teammates-wise, I'm not sure I pick Dwight Howard. I may pick Al Horford. But the Hawks took that bet. And I again, I'd rather them take that bet than just sit there and be good every year, but not great. They weren't going anywhere. Everyone knew they'd be a playoff team, but they're going to get to the second round, maybe the conference finals, but they're not going to the finals. They're not winning the championship with that roster. So the change was in order. The change was made. What do I think the Hawks are going to do this year? I say they're going to be a top four seed again. I think they can win a playoff series again. And this is... I think the point guard position shooter, as long as he steps up and does his thing, but the Hawks were smart in getting some solid, solid, uh, what's the word, reinforcements 
at that point guard position with Jared Jack and Kirk Heinrich. So they'll be okay even if that even if he doesn't work out, Dennis Schroeder. But I think he he will work out if he gets injured or something like that. They got some backup plan for him. This team has solid backups at every position. I say they make the top four seed in the East. I think they win a playoff series. They go to the second round of the playoffs where they'd be looking at facing either Toronto or Cleveland in that second round matchup. And they may even get a home court advantage if they're able to get a top two seed. And then it's definitely possible they can get a top two seed. I think the Hawks can get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I think they can get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I do not think they can beat a team like the Cleveland Cavaliers simply because I don't like their, their backups, actually their wing position players. That's the number one thing. I don't think they can beat the Cavs because at the wing positions, they don't have anyone who can really deal with a LeBron James. I mean, there's no team in the league who has someone who can, quote unquote, deal with LeBron James and stop him. But there are teams who have guys who can compete and make it tough on LeBron. I don't think any of the wing guys that the Hawks employ can make it tough on LeBron James. And that's going to be a problem. I also don't think Schroeder has enough to make it tough for a guy like Kyrie Irving. And these things you got to factor in. If you're just looking at these one-to-one -one matchups, in order to get out of the Eastern Conference, you're going to have to go through Cleveland at some point. And those are Cleveland's strengths. Yeah, Kyrie Irving and LeBron James. And if your strengths are not in those positions to have somebody go at that guy, then you're going to be in trouble. So I don't think the Hawks can get out of the Eastern Conference, but they can get to the Eastern Conference Finals. There's no other team in the East that is so potent that they can't beat them looking at the roster that they have. So that's what I think about the Hawks this year. All you let me know what you think. Hawks fans, Dwight Howard fans, haters, detractors, whoever you are. You're a fan of basketball, period, which I think you are if you're watching this video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the Hawks this season, how far you think they can go, and why. Anything I left out, any player I should have talked about more because you think they'll have more of an impact than the amount of coverage that I gave them in this video. Let me know down there in the comments. Everybody, work on your game. Next team we talk about, Miami Heat. Dre all day dot com.